I find this freeform input using control equals to be very interesting. For example, here I'm going to get an entity describing Joe Biden, and I'm saving it with the variable name Joe, and then there are all these different properties I can get. And I find that with the entity properties sign. And so uh, some of them are going to work, some of them aren't. For example, weight. It would be reasonable to think that that might work. It's with a capital W weight. So let's do uh, Joe weight. Here it says missing, not available. So that's a good example of how not always all of these uh, entity properties are going to be available for each person, but some are. Like, for example, if I replace that with height, then it is available. So I really like this freeform input, but it also feels kind of non-robust to me. Like, how would I tell a computer program to do what I just did? Like, how would I tell it hit control plus equals? So what are the alternatives for that? And one of them is using this input form or the full form of Joe. But this is really complicated. Like, you're never going to be able to figure that out without somehow. Like, it's kind of circular. I want to use this entity description to describe Joe Biden. But until I've described Joe Biden, I'm never going to figure out what this suffix is. So what is some happy medium between these two? And what I want to show you is something called interpreter. And then I can say person, which is like the class that the thing is I'm looking for. And then here I can put the same input as for, uh, for the text freeform input, but I didn't have to hit control equals or anything like that. Hey, and so I can say, for example, Donald Trump. Hey, and I don't have to spell it uh, with a capital letter for the T, for example. And that worked fine. And what are the things that can go here instead of person? So I can get a list of all of those things using entity value. And so, uh, for example, the one we've been using was person. And we can see that listed here. Or another one that I was practicing with was artwork. And let me try to convince you that this interpreter function is very nice. So uh, let me write down three names of artworks. So let me call this art. And here these are going to be in strings. And so Mona Lisa, that's probably the most famous artwork as far as I'm concerned. And here is a painting I like. Uh, I don't know much about art, but I've always liked this one by Marc Chagall called Eye in the Village. And then I just looked up another one called Return of the Prodigal Son okay, by Rembrandt. So uh, there's a list of three artworks. And then uh, let me write a function called getArt okay, that takes as input a string like one of these and then gets the entity corresponding to that artwork. So we're going to do interpreter and then artwork. And a mistake I make often is to put a comma and then to put the string, but that's not how this interpreter works. You close off the bracket and then you start a new closed brackets. So uh, let's check this. And it's good to be in the habit of clearing, so I'll also clear this in the same cell. And so let's try this. Let's try get art of Mona Lisa. And it might take a little while for, for it to find it. But yeah, there it got it. And what if I want to have the image? Here, well, I can just put an image after this. Okay, I've, I know that that's a property of paintings. And there's the image. And if I want to apply this get art to all of the entries in my art list, okay, I can use this slash at notation to say apply the get art function to all entries in the art list. And there we go. And if I want to specify the size, hey, I can wrap this in the word image and then put comma image size goes to how about 400. So I th there I've reevaluated this and let's apply this again. So uh, there are the three artworks.
And I really like that we were able to get these without ever using the free form control equals uh, text input.